This was on the uh, Sunday, the uh, 14th of November, 1965. It was the first major, or the first day of a, of a major battle there called the Battle of Adrang, which was the first major battle of the Vietnam War. <coughs> our, uh, our unit was pretty fresh. We were, had only been in country uh, since uh, September. It took us uh, 30 days to go over by, uh, by ship. Uh, we had an advance party there preparing, uh, preparing for us, but uh, the main body of uh, probably uh, 13,000 troopers uh, went over by ship with all, all of our equipment. So uh, we, were, we were pretty fresh, and I had great, uh, great NCOs and, and tremendous soldiers. I had a full complement of, uh, of sergeants in 65. Uh, my, uh, my sergeants had 10 to, 10 to 18 years of service. One of my sergeants that uh, was a medic in Korea carried my aid bag because we were short medics uh, and I didn't have a, a medic attached to me at the time. But uh, <clears throat> we were trying to get up to a platoon that got cut off. Uh, and we called it the, it's referred to as Lost Platoon. Uh, and there's a book out uh, about the battle uh, that General Moore wrote called We Were Soldiers Once and Young. And then they made a movie about, uh, Mel Gibson made a movie about uh, that, that book and about the battle called We Were Soldiers. But it was, like I said, the first day of the battle, and uh, uh, my platoon was uh, attached to uh, Bravo Company to get up to that, to try to get up to that platoon that was trapped on the side of a mountain. Uh, we didn't make it on that first attempt because the fire and the uh, was too intense, and we decided to pull back uh, and refit, get more ammunition, and, and try a second time. The second time, we had uh, uh, artillery prepping our front, and uh, we were still taking a lot of, uh, a lot of casualties, and uh, we had two companies kind of online heading up to that platoon that was about... Uh, uh, approximately a thousand uh, meters away on the side of a mountain called Chupong Mountain, <clears throat> close to the Com Cambodian border. We're about five kilometers from the Cambodian border. Uh, <clears throat> and I was uh, pretty fresh, pretty new in, in, into this situation. Uh, I <clears throat> graduated from, uh, from Duquesne University in Pittsburgh in uh, June of 64 and went right into the Army and went through all my training, uh, basic, advanced training, and then ten, six months of OCS, uh, then my ranger uh, school training, which was my, my best preparation to give me the confidence and the ability to lead it, because you're out there for three months uh, in the uh, mountains of North Georgia and in, at Fort Benning and in the Everglades of, uh, of Florida, which is similar terrain to Vietnam, learning, you're out patrolling every day with uh, small unit patrols. So that was really my best uh, preparation uh, for Vietnam and it's a, a tremendous uh, very tough uh, demanding school but uh, I was a platoon leader uh, under uh, Captain Nadal and A Company that second time we went up with two companies online and as we, we were moving forward uh, <clears throat> we were taking every you know everybody has their own fire firefight in their own specific area and there was bad guys and you know some some guys would be moving ahead you know, on our on our flank we try to keep uh, uniformity there and move together but uh, that, that uh, sometimes uh, sometimes there's less contact on the one side and they can move forward quicker than we can when you think of uh, Wes's uh, situation our situation wasn't kind you think of Vietnam you think of you're hacking your way through the the jungles our area was pretty open we had a lot of there are trees and elephant grass uh, it was the type of terrain. It wasn't thick, thick jungle, so you could you could see the bad guys when they were standing up uh, above the, uh, the above the elephant grass. If they were if they were walking, most of the time they were crouching or crawling like we were too. But it was still pretty open. Uh, and straight ahead of me, about uh, 150 uh, correction, about 50 uh, yards was the. Uh, uh, a, a large, hard, solidified rock, uh, they call them an anthill, it was about six foot high, and there was uh, trees and shrubbery around it. It was a very good position, there were bad guys uh, around it and on top of it and probably up in the trees. 
right, right to my front. And in the heat of battle, there's a lot of uh, battle noise. I, I tried to get one of my soldiers uh, to shoot a, uh, <coughs> a light anti-tank weapon. It was an M72 uh, rocket launcher called a LAW. Light anti-tank weapon is, uh, is the uh, real name for it. It was a one-shot disposable uh, bazooka. You would, it was about this big, and you would pull it out and put it on your shoulder and aim it and fire it. Uh, the soldier tried it and it misfired because uh, because of all the humidity. We had a lot of some problems with the, with with some of our weapons and, and equipment because of all the, the humidity and the rain. Uh, so I took it from. I was pretty close to him and I took it from him and and I rearmed it, which is at, what you do is you close it up and you open up again and you shoot it. This time it fired and it uh, made a big boom and a big cloud of dust. And I thought I destroyed the anthill, but I didn't. It was too hard and too too thick. <laughs> that uh, It's a very powerful weapon, but, and it has a shape charge, and it can penetrate armor, but uh, it didn't make it all the way through that. Uh, I'm sure I might have done some damage with it, but uh, I didn't completely destroy that, uh, that anthill. So we started moving forward again, trying to get up to that platoon, and again, uh, we were getting, we were stopped, and uh, I had, I told one of my men to with using sign language to, you know, throw a grenade and to go up there and to throw it over the top of the anthill. <clears throat> and he thought I meant to throw it from where we were, we were at. And he, he did, but it, it landed short because of all the trees and the foliage. He didn't make it behind it. So rather than waste any more time, uh, I, I told my men on both sides to stop with, you know, to kind of hold their fire and I just didn't want to get shot by my own men. And I ran forward about uh, about 30 meters to the ant hill and and threw the grenade over the top. And when it went off, I went around to the side and silenced uh, a few more of the enemy that were that were trying to shoot me. And uh, and when that happened, uh, after I had silenced the machine gun, I to I I turned to my uh, to my side and I told my men to come on, let's get going. We had to get to that platoon. And uh, that's when I uh, I got shot in the jaw, it went in here and come out over here. At first, it uh, kind of ruined my day. Uh, I've never been, been wounded or hurt real bad in, in high school or college sports or anything, and, and that, uh, the, the pain and the, and the it, I had to feel my mouth to, sil to, see, to make sure I still had a, a jaw there in my, in, in any way, but it, uh, my medic was first up, and, uh, and then another my soldier came up to patch me up I was kind of a walking wounded. I was able to get back. A couple of my soldiers carried me back to the uh, the battalion command position, where all the wounded were being uh, were being held. Uh, they continued the assault, but they didn't make it up there. There was too much, uh, too many bad guys out there, and uh, so they pulled back uh, to a defensive perimeter that night. And uh, that platoon held out three uh, determined NVA attacks. That was on the side of the hill there of, of Chupong Mountain. It was led by a buck sergeant named Ernie Savage. His, uh, battali or his uh, platoon leader was a, an OCS classmate of mine, was killed, and two of his sergeants were also killed very, uh, very quickly uh, in that battle. And uh, this bu buck sergeant, once he took over, he was the, uh, he was the mortar uh, squad leader, so he could call in artillery and mortar fire, and he did that. And they put a rain of steel around their their positions, and they never lost another man, killed or wounded throughout that night, and were able to defend their positions through three uh, determined attacks uh, that night. And we were able to get up to them uh, the next day, and uh, and and get them out of there. Uh, <clears throat> the medic was very instrumental too in uh, in keeping the, the guys alive, and was very uh, very courageous and was uh, awarded the. For his ex for his uh, assistance was awarded uh, the Distinguished Service Cross uh, along with uh, Sergeant Savage, uh, the uh, leader of that uh, lost platoon. Uh, but I was I made it back uh, to the and this the action happened uh, around five o'clock, so it was getting starting to get dark. By the time I got back there and and was evacuated by uh, one of the helicopters that was bringing in ammunition and water, uh, backhauled us to a uh, <coughs> play coup where we were uh, treated. <clears throat>